are the ministers of the gospel required to preach to sinners? December 1st, 1850. We answer without hesitation, they are. If they were not to preach to sinners, we know not where on the face of the earth they could find a people to preach to. All the sons of Adam have sinned, and by the law of God every mouth is stopped, and the whole world becomes guilty before God. If therefore Christ has commissioned his ministers to preach to the whole, or to any portion of the human family, they are commissioned to preach to sinners. We understand from the scriptures that Christ has redeemed a portion of the human family from the demands of divine justice, the curse and dominion of the law, and the guilt and consequences of sin, and that these are in due time called with a holy calling, quickened by the Holy Spirit, and that they are gathered with the glorious arm of their great shepherd and brought into the liberty of the sons of God and into the order and made partakers of the privileges of his church, that they are and shall be translated out of the kingdom of Satan and into the kingdom of God's dear Son. And these being thus redeemed, regenerated, and brought into the kingdom of Christ are denominated Christians, believers, saints, etc. And that those who are not so called and born again are denominated unbelievers. But it is nevertheless true that even God's people, while here in the flesh, feel, know, and confess that they are still sinners. It is true that they hate sin, but they feel its working in their flesh and often cry out in bitter, bitterness of spirit, Who shall deliver me from the body of this death? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. So far as the proclamation of the gospel is concerned, it is to be preached to both and to all classes of men, wherever God in his providence opens a door to his ministers to proclaim it. The preaching of the gospel does not mean the telling men to do this or that. It signifies the work of proclaiming among the Jews and Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Not calling on dead sinners to quicken or save themselves, but the proclamation is that salvation is of the Lord. It is not to tell or command sinners to repent, but to proclaim that Christ is exalted to be a prince and a savior to give repentance to Israel and the remission of sins. To hold forth the idea that the gospel is a system of duties which unregenerate men are required to do as a condition of salvation, or that the ministers or the preaching are means of saving dead sinners is in our estimation a perversion of the gospel. But the ministry is to bear testimony before the whole world that there is no other name given under heaven among men whereby we must be saved, neither is there salvation in any other. But it is frequently charged that old school Baptists refuse to preach the gospel to sinners. This charge has probably been met and refuted a thousand times, but the reason why it is still reiterated is because they refuse to give the children's bread to dogs. Or in other words, to address the promises and consolations of the new covenant to those who are not manifestly in that covenant. Such, for instance, as seek and ye shall find, knock and it shall be opened unto you. The gospel is in its nature discriminating. It has charms only for the heaven-born souls. It being spiritual cannot be received by unregenerate men. The natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. It is not the province of the preachers to supply the destitute with ears, nor are they in any sense the means of supplying them. For none but God can give ears to hear and hearts to understand. Yet, 
when and where God has given ears, the preaching of Christ crucified is Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. But where God has not given ears to hear, the preaching is to the Jews a stumbling block and to the Greeks foolishness. The preacher may make the proclamation, authorized by the example of Christ and his apostles, he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. It should also be observed that Christ's ministers are to preach the gospel. They are not ministers of the old covenant, but of the new, not of the letter, but of the spirit. For Moses has in every city them that preach him. Neither are they to preach the doctrines of men, nor traditions of men, nor a gospel, but the gospel of Christ. When the gospel is preached in truth and soberness, it will find out those who have ears to hear. It will commend itself to those within its sound who are born of God. And although its preaching will not give life to the dead, it will feed, comfort, edify, and instruct the living. And it will, as a general, if not universal thing, make all others angry. No argument can penetrate the deep recesses of the unrenewed heart to carry thither one spark of spiritual light or truth. For this sufficient reason, God has hidden these things from them and revealed them to babes, even so, because so it seemed good in his sight. The impenitent sinner is under the law, and what the law says, not what the gospel says. It says to them that are under the law, the law curses all that are under it, for as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. The law curses but cannot bless. For if a law had been given that could give life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. But on the other hand, the gospel blesses, but cannot curse. Yet all its blessings are upon those who are redeemed from under the law and are brought under grace. Instead, therefore, of preaching the law or obedience to the law as a way of life and salvation, the ministers of Jesus, like Paul, should preach that by the deeds of the law no flesh shall be justified before God. And instead of preaching the gospel as the power of man or men through instrumentality unto salvation, which is not true, he should preach that the gospel is the power of God through faith unto salvation, which is true and which the Bible affirms.